All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing membrane-bound proteins, uh, which consist of ion channels and carrier proteins to be specific. So probably in biology class, you've seen this very common video, uh, picture of the lipid bilayer. And you learned, you know, the, there's the hydrophilic head and then the hydrophobic tail, which is in the middle, right? Uh, so what we're actually going to be talking about now in the picture is something you probably haven't learned, and it's the channels, the proteins, right? So it's, it's these guys. That's what we're going to be learning about now. Uh, you may went over it briefly in biology, uh, but now this is when you actually get in more in depth. And what we're going to do today is basically the bread and butter of physiology. This is how, this is the mechanism how things work. Uh, and arguably, this could be probably the most important lecture, um, followed by, you know, probably the sodium potassium pump, which is the next video. So the first thing we need to understand is what can cross uh, without channels. So what are, what are the channels, right? So channels are basically, think about it as a tunnel system, right? For things to go in and out of the cell, right? Like tunnel systems that way or this way, right? Ions require these channels like sodium, potassium, right? Chloride, hydrogen ion, all this kind of stuff requires this channel. It cannot it cannot naturally go through this lipid bilayer. It's not possible. So it requires basically like a tunnel or, a, you know, um, it's basically like an underground tunnel, right, to get to point A to point B. What can cross without the channels? Like what, what, what can just go naturally through the layer, the bilayer? Well, gases can go through, right, gases. Hydrophobic molecules or molecules that do not like water. Like think about hydro as water. And phobic is like phobia, right? They're basically allergic to water. So those can go through. And polar uncharged molecules. So like I said, right, sodium is charged. Potassium is charged. Chloride is charged. Iron is charged. All of these are charged, right? These, that's why they require, um, that's why they require um, channels. Okay. Let's do the first thing, is channel proteins. Okay, there, there are many different types of proteins, okay? The first thing is we're gonna do channel proteins. This is known as a gated protein channel. Do you see how there's a ball and chain here? That's literally what it is. This ball and chain blocks the channel from you know being open for things can pass through. So things like, for example, ions, right? Sodium, right? It cannot go through because it's blocked. How do we unblock it? There are three ways well, we're, we're, that we're gonna go in this video. There's voltage gated. What this means is when the cell reaches a certain voltage, the ball and the coil will go out of place and basically make the tunnel accessible, right? So things can go through. Pretend the voltage is at, I don't know, let's say negative 40 millivolts. This is made up. Then the ball and chain will activate and it'll move out of the way. If it was at, say, negative 41 millivolts, it's going to look like this. It'll be closed. So that's called voltage-gated ion channels, or voltage-gated channels. Very common. Then there's chemically-gated channels. What does this look like? Well, say if we had a molecule, right, that's floating around. So say we have this, uh, I don't know, some random molecule, okay? And it's unbound. But then, you know, it, all we know, it, it travels along and it binds basically to here, okay? We call this a ligand. This is the term for it, it's called ligand. A ligand can be an enzyme, it can be a hormone, it can be anything in the blood. But the problem is that it has to have a certain receptor on it. So the channel itself must have this specific receptor for this ligand, right? So basically it's like a receptor here. And if it's, it's like a lock and key method, right? This, this lock here must perfectly fit this ligand. If it does, then the ball and chain will come along. So for example, if you had a ligand shaped like this, this is not gonna bind into here, it will not. And if that was the case, then it'll look like this. The ball and chain, you know, will be, it will be closed. 
So it's egg, what this chemical gate is like a lock and key. That's what it is. It's like a lock and key method. Okay. The next is mechanically gated. Mechanically gated is another way of saying basically pressure gated. Something needs to physically touch this channel to for it to move. What I what I mean by this? I um one way I can prove this to you is that if you pr if you for example take your finger and you touch on uh, some part of your skin, right on your other arm. What's the? How do we feel this? Right. Well, what's actually happening is when your finger touches your arm, right. So say if you have a finger here, right. Your finger. That's a terrible finger, but you know you know what I mean, right? <laughs> I did not go to art school, and you know now it touches the, you know it touches this, right. It physically touches this. There's just channels all over your skin, okay? The ball and chain goes, you know, it, it basically deactivates the gate and ions can flow through. Ions can flow through and this, we're gonna get into it later, but makes an extra potential and it goes to the brain. It goes to the brain. And then we feel something. That's feel something. That's sodium, by the way, Na plus. Okay, so something needs to physically touch this gate, and it opens up. So, I'll give you an example of something um, like chemically gated. Let me give you. A, uh, I did not mean to do that, but oh well, whatever. Um, for example, what a good example would be is food. How do we know something is salty? How do we know something is sweet, right? So we have um, we have these receptors in our tongue, okay? There are specific for certain ions. For example, if a sodium comes along, it'll literally bind, right, to the channel. It opens the gate, right, and this is how we feel Something salty, that's chemically gated. That's how it works. Okay. Now, these these other channels. These are called always open channels or open channels. Okay. These are literally channels that are con constantly open, so ions can go in and out. But I spelled diffusion wrong. But it works by diffusion. So say if there's a lot of sodium on the outside, okay? Remember, in diffusion, you probably learned, if we go from a high concentration to a low concentration. So there's a lot of sodium out, you know, outside the cell. It will willingly want to go inside the cell. It will willingly want to go that, right? So it'll use the channel and go inside the cell. Okay, the safest the other way around. Say if there was a lot of sodium inside the cell. Ignore the arrow. I mean, only, you know, it's not that many, uh, you know, out, um, so we have a lot outside, sorry. We have so much outside. Okay. Sodium does not want to go out and join the rest of the sodiums out here. Okay. It does not want to do that. That will not happen because of properties of diffusion, right? We go from our areas, so diffusion, let's define diffusion. So diffusion, ions will go to areas, will go, basically, let's just say, will go from areas of high concentration, to low concentration. Okay. So sodium will not want to go the other way around. This is how this works. It has to, it, the only way this works is by diffusion. 
it will go from areas. So ions will go from where it's low, you know, highly concentrated to areas that are lowly, you know, low concentrated. That's how this works. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let's move on to carrier proteins. What is this? So this is basically um, a, a fancy tunnel. We'll say that. Okay, and it, it is specific for a certain molecule. So we have this uniport here. What uniport means is there's one ion going into a one direction. Only one direction. That's what uni means. Uni means one. So this glucose is only can go only can basically go only go in one direction. Ah. Now these these transport proteins or carrier proteins are specific for one molecule. So this one in the example is specific only for glucose. There are many of these in the cell, right? There's one for sodium, there's one for potassium, there's one for chloride, there's many of them. But this one is, in, in this example, is specific for glucose. So say if a sodium molecule were to come along, it will not be able to use this. It's locked. It won't be allowed to. So <laughs> like the thing was, it's basically like a border crossing, right? This sodium does not have its passport, so it cannot cross. The glucose did, the can. Okay, so uniport means one direction. Symport, okay, what symport is, is there's two molecules going the same direction. But why, there's something very different about this. Okay, so in this example, we have sodium going inside the cell and glucose going inside. There is a lot of sodium naturally by, this is a known fact, there's a lot of sodium outside. Okay. There is a lot of glucose inside compared to the outside. So remember how we said uh, properties of diffusion. We go from areas of high concentration to low concentration. Well, glucose is literally going from low to high. So that's illegal. That should not happen. That's that this is by nature, okay? That there is this is a legitimate fact that there's a lot of uh glucose inside the cell. So this shouldn't work, but it does. Why? So what it does is sodium is free to go inside, right? It wants to go inside because there's not that there's not that many sodiums inside, right? We're going from high to low. Right? So sodium is going high to low. It's going from so high too low. Con this is concentration. Glucose is going from, you know, low to high, which is, which is not allowed. So what, gl this, what glucose is going to do, right, it's going to tag along with sodium. So sodium is like, hey, I see you, glucose. Why don't you come on me? Like, like, why don't you just hop on my back and we'll go in together, right? So it uses sodium's ability to go inside the cell. And basically, it's going to bring glucose with him. They're basically be best buddies, right? They're basically holding hands and going inside together. Glucose cannot go inside without sodium. It will not go willingly. It's not possible. But they're going to tag along. And they're going to go inside together. So this is called the sodium glucose symport. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we got antiport. What is this? So what is this saying? Ooh, I did not mean to do that. Oh, that was my physics. <laughs> uh, membrane proteins. Okay. I'll, te I'll teach physics later, I promise. <laughs> um, okay. What is antiport? Antiport is saying that one molecule, one ion, is going in one direction, and the other ion is going in the opposite direction. This normally uses ATP. So notice there's an ATP molecule here. Why? So this is the famous sodium-potassium pump. Very, very famous. Sodium-potassium pump. I will make a separate video on this pump tomorrow because it's that important. It literally gets its own video. Oh, you, you will not be alive without this pump. It is that important. So what's happening? Remember how I said there's a lot of sodium outside? So remember, we're, we're saying the top is outside, right? So this is the outside. And then this is the inside. Let me this uh, inside. 
Okay. Remember, there's a lot of sodium outside. So much. And there's not that many inside. So this should be illegal. We're going from low to high. Okay. There's an exception. If we use ATP, this ATP literally gives its energy to the, you know, the channel and shoves out sodium out of the cell. Same principle goes with the potassium here, where there's a lot inside, right? So much inside. Um, and then we have, you know, sodium inside, uh, potassium here, right? Potassium does not willing, willingly, does not want to willingly go inside, right? There's too much inside. Right? We're going from low to high. We use that ATP and basically shove that potassium inside the cell. So that's called the sodium potassium pump. Also known, well, there's a there's different other there's other ones, but this is called an antipore. One ion goes in one direction, the other one goes in the opposite direction. There is something called a G protein coupled receptor, which is we're going to go over later. But these are the, the only ones you should be concerned about right now. Um, so hopefully this makes sense, and I apologize for that little small interruption to see my physics work. <laughs> um, I won't cut that out, because I'm like, I'm too bored. Not too bored. I mean, I'm too lazy to do that. I shouldn't say that on YouTube, but whatever. You know you know how unprofessional I am in these videos. <laughs> um, you know, remember, just like and subscribe. Um, I don't I hate to be that guy, but, you know, I kind of want subscribers, so people, more people can see this. Um, I really hope this is, you know, helpful. Um, all right. See you later.